Hey, we're back. You are watching Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media, all of our platforms. I'm Mike Morales here in our mobile command center in St. Petersburg, Florida. And that young man out there is... Rick Levy in San Diego. Rick, can you hear me? <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, I, I, I have a, a new headset, if you haven't noticed, and I'm, I'm going to eventually, or every once in a while, pick it up so you can hear me on my microphone. Otherwise, I'll be talking into my chest. But uh, <laughs> um, we had just gotten through tasting La Tarea, which in Spanish means the task. And this, the, this is the, the reposado version. Um, as you can see, it is a 100%. It, it's, got a, it's got a kind of a light amber color. Um, yes. And lots of bubbles. Lots of bubbles. Now, Rick and I... kind of hanging in there, too. It yeah. seems like it's got some, you know, some viscosity to it. Well, you know, uh, I noticed that the Blanco had some, some nice legs and tears. It didn't, it didn't cling and it didn't run. It, it, was, it was very, um, uh, just a very uniform, you know, kind of a, kind of a, a... I don't even know if you can still see any of this stuff. Um, actually, there it is. This was the Blanco... And, and it's got some nice, yeah, some nice mixing and tears. Very, very nice. As you can see, we're using the Jarrito glassware from Chisholm Trail. Thank you very much. We fell in love with these last year. So uh, Rick is using the much larger, the longer chimney, and I'm using the, uh, the, short, the short stout one. Uh, nothing, it, nothing hides from the Jarrito, I like to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did say that the, at one point the uh, years ago when the Riedel first came out, you, people used to say that the Riedel brings out the nasty in the tequila, um, but you can't hide it with, with, you know, with the Jarrito. Um, Rick, we fell all over ourselves with the with the Blanco. Do we know how long this is this is aged? Do we get these from we got these from Glass Bottom Distributors. You can read about uh, Umberto Ibarra, the owner. On Tequila Aficionado Media, um, we, we we had a nice little uh, uh, write up and an interview with him uh, during the Wild Wild West tour. Um, he's also the importer of Mandala, which won for packaging. It won a, a Brand of Promise award for packaging. So this is this is one that he's importing as well. And um, yeah, this uh, is aged four months in Jack Daniels barrels. Really. That's got a great color for four months, though. Yeah, you know, um, it's 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 darker than than I would have uh, than I would have thought, but it's nice. That, that I, I'm assuming that these are like well, they only they are once used Jack Daniels barrels, so they still have plenty of of color in them. And it could be the char, you know, maybe they're using a uh, a darker toast on the barrel. Well, we're gonna. Uh, we had nominated the Blanco for uh, a brand of promise in the in the value category, and oh whoa, oh 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 my God! Now, <laughs> uh, for truth and advertising and transparency, I had the Blanco months ago with with Umberto, but we never opened the Reposado, so we don't. I literally don't know what that what that smells like. <laughs> I got those tingles down the back of my neck that, you know, that warm feeling that goes down the spine. It's having a nose gasm, ladies and gentlemen. I am. I am. Oh my gosh. Wow. You know, you hear, you hear, you hear Mike's, you know, dulcet, low resonant tones coming through his low microphone, like one of those late night DJs. And you know, that feeling you get when you're listening to that voice, that is the feeling I got when I smelled this. You're listening to the velvet tones of Mike Morales and his tequila. You're oh. experiencing the velvet aromas of La Terea. Ooh, wow, that is something. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Well, you know, you're getting all the whiskey notes, though, Rick. I mean, it's it, the aroma that we get on the top is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's whiskey, it's... Um, I, I want to say caramel, um, some honey tones. I'm getting some spice notes. I'm really getting yeah. some spice notes also. 
And of course, I think the you know the agave is still there. It has to be because it was so agave forward. Now, we mentioned that the blanco didn't have any. Um, I didn't taste any pepperiness like we have in some other blancos. What we tasted more was minerality, like like we sometimes get from Amatitan tequilas from that area. Although this this tequila comes from a whole different area, a whole different microclimate. The the opposite <laughs> side of the volcano. The opposite side. But I'm getting some spice notes. I, I really am. And this is really beautiful. It's, what? I, I love it. And so this comes from uh, Nam 1424, uh, Distilladora de Agave Azul. And uh, they're in San Juanito de Escobido, uh, the other side of the, the tequila volcano, kind of opposite of El Arenal. Uh, if you uh, went from Magdalena straight down, uh, you'd probably end up hitting this town. Wow. And what's interesting is they say that the, uh, the agaves have this different personality there. They're not, um, you know, what you would expect of a, a lowlands agave, that they tend to be sweeter, more like the highlands agaves. I thought that was interesting. Well, you know, we did notice a difference. It, 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 it really isn't, and, and you and I, you know, after the last couple of years, We've had tequilas from several different microclimates and regions, from Marandas, uh, Atotonilco, uh, Amatitan, and each one of these, when you really dissect them, they're very different and similar. And this is, we've never had anything like this. I, I you know, I can see the similarities, but it's still distinct enough to go, no, this is a, this is a whole other. It's another other, terroir. Yeah. Now these folks, um, uh, the folks who make La Tarea, they are—they only make a handful of, of, of brands. They own their own agave, so they, they grow their own and and also uh, uh, own the, the the distillery. I think if you watch the the Blanco um, uh, edition, uh, Rick goes into a little bit of the back history of, of this of this family. They're like what three generations of of. Yeah, uh, it's the uh, third generation running the distillery now. Okay. Wow, this is just gorgeous, man. And the, the pricing on this is incredible. Uh, I found it for the same price as the Blanco. So both the, uh, both the regular price and the sale price were the same as the Blanco. And that uh, was at high time. And uh, I also found them at the regular price um, on another site. Uh, and I'm not sure what the site was, but, uh, you know, it was pricing at uh, $30 a liter, which, uh, you know, for a liter bottle is a good deal. It was probably, um, uh, it was probably around 22 for the... Uh, for the 750 uh, for, Well, for the sale price. And, oh. you know, so when you compare this to a 750 it's more like uh, $16.50. So, you know, extreme value. Yeah. Now it, you can see the color too. It, it's it actually looks darker in the bottle. It's weird. It's uh, my lighting here, of course, isn't the greatest. I have halogen lights in, uh, above me here, um, and I'm getting it's it's lighter than it appears in the in the bottle. For some reason, the bottle is is making it look a little bit darker, but the wood notes are alive. Yeah, and it does seem, you know, the color in the glass does seem much more like a four-month repo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 this looks darker in the bottle, like it's been aged a little bit longer, maybe six to eight months instead of just the four. So, all right, I got to dive in, man. Might be getting uh... – Mm -hmm. oh, I'm getting some uh, on the aroma. I'm getting like some honey, maybe a touch of cherry. Mm. Well, I got I got more spices. Maybe a little bit of cinnamon. Okay, now now I'm getting a, a more of a of a warmth. Ooh. How? I can't believe this is this this inexpensive. I got lip numbness. I got. Uh, did you get the gum numbness? The lip numbness? Yeah, oh, I'm getting this tingling all over the palate. It's uh, it's really quite nice. Oh, the quality of this tequila. 
Wow. Yeah, this you is... know, I'm getting some nice spices. Well, I, I got some peppery notes, too, on the entrance, and I'm not sure what that's about because the Blanco didn't give that to me, not not, a, not at first try. Uh, I, I, I noticed more of the minerality than I did the spice, the spiciness, but now I'm getting like pepper, you know, like right on the entrance, I got a little bit more pepper than I did in the Blanco. And I don't know what that's attributed to. I don't know if that's the barrel talking or maybe it's just opening up finally. Yeah. Again, both these, both of my bottles were sealed. So I, I don't know what that's all about. And, you know, with a, when you're talking like a value tequila, you would kind of expect you know, maybe there's a little bit of roughness going down on the back end or maybe some extra heat, but I'm not getting that. It's a really, it's a, you know, it's a beautiful presentation. You don't expect the, uh, the complexity that we're getting from a value tequila. It just, it, sometimes it just doesn't happen. You know, you have one characteristic that leads whatever that happens to be. Either it's agave forward or it's minerality, but with this tequila, there's a complexity that you don't often get with a value tequila. You get it in the more expensive ones that you and I have had, you know, yeah. or even mezcals for that matter. But I'm getting I'm, some nice tannic qualities, you know, wood, but it's not drying my palate out like uh, will often happen when you get those tannins. Well, th since these are Jack Daniels barrels, if that's indeed what they're using, it's, it, it's whiskey. So it, I think it goes in dry and finishes sweet. You know, whereas bourbon is kind of the other way around, and and like you said, it could be the it could be the char that they're using as well, whatever they're doing to the barrel. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is a really nice nose. I'm loving those barrel notes, that warmth and sweetness. I say sweetness; it's not. You know, it's not sweet, but um, I don't know. What am I trying to say? It's like the, uh, it's the you know, like that, that caramel, the vanilla, that the kind van of thing. Caramel. It's the it's the the baking spice notes that we're yeah. getting. You know that 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 mellows out. It it really wasn't a very it it wasn't aggressive, as in the blanco. You know, it had a beautiful aroma. The blanco did. It didn't hardly any i could hardly detect any alcohol i get more alcohol from this one from the repo and that's just at the bottom where it really belongs yeah but wow this is really something the quality of this tequila wow go find it yeah oh they're uh so they're using they're baking with autoclaves and uh they are using uh they're fermenting in stainless steel vats distilling in uh stainless steel pot stills um so you know it's the way you would go for a uh for a value priced um you know quality tequila yeah. and i'm just i'm really impressed with what they've come up with yeah, the characteristics, the, the, it still has a lot of character and complexity that you don't often get in a, in a value tequila. Like I said, you, you, get, you get one if you're lucky, maybe two. But these have different layers to them. And, and wow. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, a, a value tequila that you'd want to sip and savor. Maybe your best bet's just to not, save, not serve this as a value. Buy all you can. <laughs> We're in a crisis, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to want quality tequila, and you're looking at it, man, because... Yeah, this is some quality agave to stock up on. Yeah, wow. Go find it. Look at that. I got lingering bubbles, Rick. You yeah, know, they just hang in there. They just, it's, you know how rare this is? And, again, and it's not... It doesn't coat the palate either. It's not... Uh, you know, it's not syrupy or thick, but... Uh, yeah, it's you know it's right where it should be. Finish too. It's got a nice warm fuzzy. So mm -hmm. and, and and that's really the only thing that lingers is is the finish. It's got a great finish. It's got a very non-aggressive entry on the blanco, the reposado. I I detected more pepper, you know, and that could be just spice notes from the barrel. Um, yeah, yeah. The warmth, the warmth and the flavor, you know, hangs on the back of the palate and down the throat. The spice is, you know, short to medium. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it you know and really, it doesn't it doesn't leave you dry. It's it, uh really, it really is. You'll hear my air conditioning go off every once in a while because um, I am in a box. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I'm I'm so impressed by the quality of this tequila. I, I say, and I mentioned that the name La Tarea means the task. Your task, should you choose to accept it, is to go find these bottles of tequila and hoard them. Go buy them, buy the carton, buy the case, because for that price. Yeah. And At this price, you can afford to buy a case. Yeah, and it's a liter bottle, man. Holy cats! Just now, and, and again, not a not the type of tequila you want to stick a straw in and just suck down because some tequilas just tend to disappear like that. This one, you really you really can spend some time with. So, that being said, I, I think Brand of Promise nominee. I think in in both the Ripple Silo category and the Value category as well. Absolutely, it's going to be. I don't know. It's going to be hard to beat this in the value category. Yeah, I think so too. You know, I, with this, the the pricing, this yeah. is this is a category killer here. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the season is still young. We've got yeah. a lot more tequilas coming, a lot more mezcals. You and I, they're going to see us a lot here shortly. So, that's our take on La Tarea. Um, go out and find it again. A brand of promise nominee in the Reposado category. And the value category. Uh, I'm Mike Morales here in St. Petersburg, Florida. That gentleman there is Rick Levy in San Diego. You've been watching Sipping Off the Cuff on all of our platforms, Tequila Aficionado Media. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe down there, down below. Tell us if you've had this tequila yet. You can find them and see them on Instagram. They have a really uh, good social media presence. Um, you know, tell us what you think. We've told you what we thought. Uh, in any case, like we say here every every night, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely. I'm Mike Morales. I'm CEO of Tequila Aficionado Media. And I just wanted to thank you for watching Sipping Off the Cuff. We love doing these reviews for you. Now, if you're an Agave Spirits brand owner and you're watching this, there are three things that I'd like to talk to you about. Number one, if you'd like us to review your Agave Spirit on Sipping Off the Cuff, just send me an email. Mike at tequilaaficionado.com. It won't cost you a dime, and I promise you'll get an honest review. Number two, if your brand has been nominated, past or present, as a brand of promise, we can help you promote your brand effectively and affordably over on the tequila PR side of things. Just email me, Mike at tequilaaficionado.com. And number three, if your brand has ever been a brand of promise nominee or a winner, you automatically qualify with us or to go with us on our next promotional tequila tour. So shoot me an email, tours at tequilaaficionado.com, and I'll send you all the details on our upcoming tequila tour. That's it. Thanks again for watching. Sip wisely.